So at NOAA Webster Educational Foundation, we focus on promoting core principles and best practices around the role of instruction, parents, government, faith and morality, and facilities. Do you have any specific thoughts you'd like to share on these points? Wow, that, that's, a, that's a big one. I think teachers need to understand and we need to all be in agreement that men are moral agents. They have the ability to learn. They have the ability to understand right and wrong and they need to be treated with dignity. And, and that sets the, the, the attitude uh, of the atmosphere of the, edu- of, the, of the classroom. And we need to also, teachers need to understand that all students can learn. Everyone can learn, even students with disabilities can learn because God has made us with incredible brain power to be able to do that to whatever acumen he has given us. And so he uses education as an instrument to better each individual. So when you're in a classroom, you've got acumens that are an array of acumen. Mm -hmm. But each child has the opportunity to improve. So to treat that child as an individual is very important. And also to give them the tools as opposed to, we tend to, in education today, I think, dictate education. You know, we're reading a book and okay, you've got that, move on to the next page. That's not really, that's not education. That's information. We need to develop lifelong learners. We need to help children realize that they can learn on their own. Teachers should consider the unique quality as we educate our children, the unique qualities that children have and and applaud those qualities and try and develop those qualities. It doesn't take a lot, but it just takes a little bit of study on each individual in your class because they're all different and realize that they all know right from wrong. They all know when they're being lazy. They all know when they're do, hitting it on all four cylinders and doing the right thing. They all know when they're not interested in the topic. Let, let students really focus and soar with, int- with topics that they're interested in. Okay. So let me just uh, push back just for a second, if I may. Um, so I'm hearing you. And as I was listening to you, because you were talking about teachers ought to, um, I think the vast majority of teachers that are out there and teachers that are listening would agree with probably everything or most everything you said. Uh, That's their heart. That's their passion. Most of them, they're in this career because that's who they are and that's what they want. That's correct. A good teacher is called to teach. Yes. Yes. However, I think most of them would say that's what we want to do. However, our system through mandates and this and that have got us so locked down and in a box. Uh, So the people who are the policy people need to fix things in the system so that we can do our job. So what do you say to that? I, I would agree with them. I would agree with them. The system is so bogged down with driven policy that I I don't see how anybody can perform their teaching job. We need to let teachers soar with their strengths, just Mm -hmm. like we need to let students soar with their strengths. But this is the problem, Mountain. When you have a one system fits everything, you're trying to policy down every single thing and you can't do that. We need to, we need to diversify our system. And, And that's what charter schools do. And we need, we need more, we need more charter schools. We need math and science schools. We need computer schools. You know, I appreciate the teachers that are in the classrooms today. And from, from, from being on the state board of education, there is so much required of them. It is impossible. So why not have a charter system? where you don't have all that requirement and the schools are performing better. So see, we, we need to lighten up on our, on, our, um, on our teachers and let them soar with their strengths and diversify yeah. our system. 